Hello everyone, it's me Andrea. Today I show you this file folder I altered. Um, got that at work, you know, one of these folders. You can see I, I peeled off this, this sticker there. You get, uh, it's an organization where you have seminars and stuff like that. So we have quite a bit of them laying around in the office. No one used them really. So I put Gesso um, on the surface and I already used inside some um, stencils but I didn't show it because I didn't push the button of the camera. Sorry, <laughs> sometimes I forget. So um, that's the last bit I do in the, to the inside and now I start to use uh, this stencil for the outside, that's the main uh, focus on the front. Um, this is a set of six, I think it's six, yeah, fold um, stencils I got um, from Viva Decor actually. It's magnolias, you get uh, branches and one, a big one with branches and then um, different blossoms in different stadiums of blooming and it's quite nice. It's really big so you can't use it in smaller projects but um, they're really nice. I like them a lot. So I did two of this on the front and um, on it's actually the reverse then I use here you can see a closer. I use this um, uh, stencil from Illico I got. Thank you Illico. It, this swirls I um, use actually I'm a bit uh, you will see that after <laughs> I was a bit um, and I didn't think about that it's me not playing you know I uh, wanted to have an unequal number there but um, I ran out of space so should have planned it better but yeah so and now I start inside with painting and I use one of my really most favorite combination that this red violet and with blues turquoises blue turquoise green turquoise and uh, Prussian blue and a bit of ultramarine blue so um, I put it on mainly on the in into the middle and uh, it looks a bit messy at the moment but um, I will let it dry a little bit and then go over it with a baby wipe to bring all the paint together and to get the stencil the raised parts out a bit more and then the baby wipe is soaked with paint and that's how I go over the other parts, unpainted parts, and have automatically the paint on top. So, and here I use a brayer and use my Lumiere paints to go over the raised areas with the brayer to get a bit of the texture out and uh, do that on the other side as well, leftover paint. I use um, for putting it on with my fingers to accentuate some parts so don't waste something so we're still there so I used it up and on the other side as well because you have this blue parts and this uh, violet parts so I had to <coughs> uh, put the, the paint on um, with my fingers, with a brayer would have been a bit, I don't know, the red stuff over the red, you wouldn't have seen that, so you know what I mean, I hope you know what I mean. So, um, yeah, that's the last step for inside, I uh, edge it with ink and then I do the front part and uh, I basically painted one layer, complete layer, of this turquoise and the um, in a bit different what I do normally or what I did inside so I did only one layer and it was a bit difficult because I don't know if you could see that before this folder has um, a texture itself is a bit like not really corrugate, corrugated cardboard like this very very fine corrugated cardboard a bit a little bit like that so, and uh, while it was still a bit wet, I went over it with, I think that's, no, that's Prussian blue and ultramarine, ultramarine 
glue as well and put it on uh, some spots and uh, dry it by dabbing over it with a dry cloth and then start with a baby wipe to bring out the, the stenciled parts and the, bring the paint together or the colors together and this is uh, Lumiere in um, turquoise, it's pearlescent so it looks very light and shiny in this light, it's reflecting so but it, it, it's uh, you will see that at the end on the pictures it's a really nice shiny turquoise so and I wanted to have uh, this swirls in this paint or in this color that's Lumiere as well in burgundy I think it is and um, the easiest way of course is to put the stencil over it again so you can see that I have four of them on that part I wanted to have five but as I said I ran out of space so the same bit here on the front with the stencil I put some gesso down first I dried it in between and put a second layer on top and then I put the paint on and with for the stems I use three different uh, shades of grey, green, grey <laughs> and uh, a light one, very light one, this this, this um, more neon or reflection green I think it's called from Amsterdam and uh, a may green and a really dark one and I uh, yeah put it wet in wet so that I could play a bit with it and uh, mix it a bit while I was putting it on so and um, that's on this part yeah. then I start with the blossoms so I use basically you can see me laying down this red stuff that's uh, this red violet from Amsterdam but um, every now and again I dip my brush into white acrylic you can't see that it's next to it so it looks like I've, I'm doing nothing <laughs> going over with my brush <laughs> but it's white paint I wanted to have this um, um, different um, shades you know a bit lighter a bit darker and I wanted to have them not in the center you know you have different the magnolia sometimes they are they're quite weird when they when they bloom you have um, the first quite light and then this this red violet is appearing slowly and on, on some parts sometimes only on the tip of the leaves oh, I quite like that so that's what I wanted to have I wanted to have them dark on the tips and lighter towards the middle so and because I had all the gesso on on top and it zipped a bit under the stencil I went around with a black ink pen to accentuate the shapes again and that um, makes them pop a bit more and defines them okay of course and uh, I've I do the same with the swirls on the other side but with a white sharpie and I can tell you that was a lot of work going around this uh, shapes so that's the finished stuff so and here I go um, around to shade it a bit and I use this uh, water tank brush and I take the paint directly from this intense pencil um, it's a natural grey to put it on with the water brush tank. It's the most convenient way to do it for me actually. And then it's water uh, resistant or it's uh, waterproof, it's not smearing. Uh, some parts weren't dark enough for me and I used this pit pen big brush in in what is it? Um, magenta, actually. <laughs> That's a very dark magenta. Yeah. So, 
sorry about the noise here. And here you can hardly see that I put some white dots down here and there was some leftover acrylic paint and do a bit more to the background with this paint you will see just uh, some dots with my shop uh, chopsticks I put in um, uh, three of them together all around and the next one is making circles with the lid that's a little plastic lid from the from the spray bottle um, use it in black and a, and then the next one with white slightly off and uh, yeah that you can still see the black ones and with a credit card go over it with black and then with white acrylics quite next to it slightly off center as well so that's next to each other but very close like the circus with the lid. So, with a uh, etching here and there. And I think that's basically the last bit, or one of the last bits, the um, etching with ink, the black archival ink. And uh, of course, the words. And I think that is the right thing for. I will take this actually to work. You know, when you have meetings, you're always there with a paper pad and nothing really nice. So I thought I'd make this for work. It looks nicer when you're sitting there in a meeting. You have something to look at. <laughs> you know. So what I do here, I wanted to have a nicer system to put the papers in or the pages in. And um, I put holes. I never measure, so don't ask me about measurements. I ogle that. So I have this book binding uh, screws, and um, I use um, this uh, copper dial to make holes there. And here I ogle that with the needle. I put go through the hole to know roughly where I have to put the hole on the reverse side. So that's how I do it. No measurements nothing rocket science, something really simple and it works, come on, it doesn't need to be that exact so I already have this rubber band as you can see inside, put it, have to put it back and now I go through with this book binding screws and it is perfect works fantastically. You will see at the end I have some pages in. I will show you close up and at the end some pictures of course. And that's it. As you can, no you can't see it at the moment, you will see it at the end. I um, outlined the letters with white, with white sharpie. So that looks much nicer. But that's it. Put some varnish on top to seal it sort of. And oh yeah, the pages are already in as you can see. And I think it's quite nice. I like it a lot and will have a lot of fun with it and work. So thanks a lot for watching. And um as I said at the end there will be some pictures. And um I hope I will see you with my next video. So have a nice week. Bye bye.